Stadia is the new generation gaming platform where you can play our Stadia games from any device. A special thank you to Phil Harrison and his team. This is the beginning of our partnership. I, oh, 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 yeah, give me one second. <laughs> I honestly feel really nauseous right now. And um, it might have been because of Ubisoft's E3 event, but in a less dramatic way, it was more than likely the jalapeno poppers I just wolfed down after the live event before I started filming this. I cooked them on Friday and I kind of warmed them up and ate them now. And I don't feel so good. So, I mean, yeah, it was probably those that made me feel sick to my stomach right now. But on the other hand, it could have been that horrible conference that Ubisoft just put on. Because I wouldn't blame anyone for feeling sick watching that. Okay, I'm going to scale it back a little bit. Because Bethesda was just so disappointing. And put a whole negative spin on this whole E3 weekend event. I just don't want to go through that again. But I do, I have to be realistic about this. That wasn't good. That, that was, uh, that was, uh, a lot of people in the chat were saying that it was worse than Bethesda's. No, I wouldn't say it was worse. It was more entertaining than Bethesda because it was a lot of flashy lights. There wasn't as much talking while there was a lot of talking. There was some dancing and music. Mac from Always Sunny was there. So was the Punisher and I really like him. So there was a lot going on that visually stimulated me and kept me from being braiding hair levels of bored. But none of it was gaming related and none of it made for a good event. It was just less drawn out than Bethesda's. But it was just as bad if you were there looking for games maybe even worse and at this point it kind of feels like why is why are we have an e3 this year i mean i sony really did take the right approach here with staying the heck away from it maybe we just didn't need one i mean a lot of you are probably like but what what about nintendo well nintendo isn't really a part of e3 they do their own treehouse direct event they just do it around the same time as e3 to capitalize on the hype but they're not really a part of it i mean they are but they're not and i I mean, I did enjoy Microsoft's, but was it super needed? Apart from Keanu Reeves? No, not really. So far, this E3 has just been a complete wash, and we're all just holding on hope that Nintendo is gonna bring the goods. Okay, let's just calm down, chill out, and go through Ubisoft's event. If you missed it, you're, you're about to see what I mean. Oh, and I have to give a huge thank you to everyone. I started that stream about a thousand subs away from 600,000 on the channel and I, I just put the little thing there on the screen. I thought, you know, maybe we'll get close during the stream or maybe it'll happen before Square Enix or during Square Enix and like five minutes into the stream, y'all smashed it. And uh, I guess that goes to show how many people watch the stream and don't subscribe. Don't know how I feel about that, but I appreciate it. And it was a really, really cool moment to be able to have live with you guys. And it was definitely my highlight of the event. And it happened before the event started. So, <laughs> but thank you. It means a lot to me. And uh, Road to 1 Million is getting dangerously close. And that feels really weird to say. So thank you. So it started with the Assassin's Creed Orchestra. That's fine. Ubisoft always has music and dancing. And I like Assassin's Creed. And this was good music. So it's whatever. It's a slow start for a lot of people. But there it is. Then we moved into Watch Dogs 3. And actually, honestly, I really enjoyed this. It was our first real look at some solid new gameplay this E3 season. Other than Star Wars in EA, of course. But Watch Dogs 3 looks like it's really shaking up its formula. It gave us a real in-depth look at the new gameplay mechanics and I love the fact that you can take over any NPC in the game. Like literally anyone, any person you see in the game, you can recruit them to your legion and actually play as them. And they have their own story, their initial mission to induct them in the legion. They have their own voice acting, their own way of moving, their own animations, like the old grandma walks and kills things like a grandma. That is an insane level of freedom that we have not not seen in a game before and I just I don't know how it's going to work like because it's so new it's baffling to me like really you've you've voiced this many like is there any overlap like will any two characters have the same voice in this you know sea of NPCs you've built in this huge open world game like what is the boundary here like what is the wall we're eventually gonna hit where we start seeing some overlap or is it really just as insane as they're making it sound and my final thoughts on it is just I like that they're shaping up the watchdogs form 
formula because the first game was very eh. The second game improved on it a lot, but it didn't really feel any different to any other game of that style and genre I played before. However, the third game now looks like an all new thing, something I haven't played before. It has its own personality to it now, and I look forward to that. And honestly, that 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 was it for the event. Um, but we'll we'll keep going. It really only went downhill from here and Fast. Mac from Always Sunny took the center stage and, and I mean, okay, cool. I really love that show. Like it's in my top five favorite TV shows. I love Mac. I gave him the old ocular pat down as he walked on the stage. I could tell that he was cultivating a nice amount of mass. And he introduced us to his new show, Mythic Quest, which I guess is one big TV show promotion for Ubisoft. It's all about a game development studio and the people that are making this game, Mythic Quest. And it kind of had that feeling of like Hollywood trying to imagine what a MMO is like and then what it would be like for people to make that MMO. It didn't really feel grounded. It felt very Hollywood and the trailer wasn't that good but again I really like Mac and Abed was in the trailer too from Community so I'm gonna give it a shot. Apparently it's an Apple TV exclusive or something. I don't know what that means. I don't know how I'm gonna watch it. I might not even have a way of watching it but I, I will try it. Moving on we got Kingsman DLC for one of their games. I can't remember which. Um, doesn't really matter all that much. We didn't even get to see gameplay, just a cinematic trailer, which is par for the course at this point throughout E3. Uh, so I guess we'll move on because I, I don't, I can't actually talk about it because I didn't see it. I just saw a cinematic. Nothing to say to that, really. Then there was a, a, an interesting crossover between Adventure Time and Brawlhalla. That's a really cool crossover, and I'm sure it'll bring people in and start playing it. Um, I'm a Smash Brothers guy, so for me, it wasn't all that exciting. It was just cool to see. But there was gameplay. We saw how the Adventure Time characters battle, and I appreciated that. Then Shane from The Walking Dead, or The Punisher from The Punisher, depending on where you know him from, or somewhere else. I'm sure he's done more things. Walked out on stage with a really good Doggo, and this is where I thought things were gonna start picking up because we saw this game at the Google Stadia event And there was like a 10 second clip of gameplay and I was really hoping they were saving more of it for this event But instead we got a bunch of talking about it like they talked about this game for a good 20-25 minutes It felt like and uh, it, we got like three more cinematic trailers and no gameplay I, This game I think is playable at E3 right now people are playing it like it's ready I think it's pretty close to being released. I, I can't remember offhand, but th there is gameplay of it. We just didn't get to see any of it at, at, at this event. Like, there's a lot of games that we've seen throughout Microsoft, throughout Bethesda, and now Ubisoft that is playable at E3. And they say that. They're like, if you want to play this game, come by our booth. And they've said that a lot for a lot of these games. And yet they're not showing the people at home. And I think there's this weird disconnect this year of, you realize that people are watching from home, right? You realize not everyone is at E3. Some people want to see this gameplay and this is your chance to show us. Sure, there's been some events after the fact, like people were streaming Gears of War 5, but I've been so busy watching these events that I haven't had time to watch anything other than that. And people, you know, your normal casual E3 viewer isn't watching everything around the main events. The main events are your channel chance to show us these things. It's where you have the most eyeballs and you're just showing us cinematic trailers. And I know that works for mobile games because mobile games, typically the gameplay looks like crap. So you want to show this big overhyped cinematic trailer that makes it look way better than it is. But a lot of these games you're working on right now, like Ghost Recon, probably look really cool. And we want to see that. That's what's going to excite us. And that's what's going to make us buy the game. Not a fourth cinematic trailer. I'm rambling. Let's continue. Now we got another mobile game. Oh, just yeah, thank goodness that every developer and publisher is tackling these mobile games this year. I'm, gl I'm so glad that everyone's dipping their toes in that microtransaction water. We got another mobile game, another Tom Clancy game, and um, yeah, cinematic for this too. This blew my mind. How? How are we looking at a mobile game of all things and not seeing gameplay for the mobile game? Like, oh, like, oh, man. There was like a little snippet, but like it wasn't really showing you how to play it and it just, whatever we did see, let's be honest, it looks bad as well. So moving on. Then we got Just Dance. I mean, you knew this was happening, right? This has happened every single year, as far as I can remember, where they come out on stage and they dance to advertise the new Just Dance. You don't actually get to see the game at all. You just see some people dancing and your streams get copyrighted because of all the music they play. That's the best part about those segments. My video's getting claimed right now. There's like zero chance this is monetized I've lost everything We've shown no gameplay yet 
But we're dancing on the stage, oh yeah It doesn't matter if you see the game or not You're gonna buy it anyway Cause we're Ubisoft Oh, this is great this is, this is everything I've ever wanted out of a presentation, a gaming presentation. And apparently Just Dance is going to be on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Google Stadia, and Wii. What a forgettable console the Wii U was. Hands up if you're actually buying this on Wii in 2019. Please. We got a trailer for Rainbow Six Quarantine, a new game they're working on. It's a game where you, um... You're in quarantine? Maybe? I don't know. Cinematic trailer. Moving on. Division. Okay, great. Division time. Alright, this game's been out for a while. I don't hate it. I've been playing through it. I'm at level like 20 or something. And a new DLC is coming to the game. So, I actually haven't played it in a couple weeks. And I am looking for a reason to get back into it. So, DLC will do that. So, um... They didn't show us the DLC though. They they just told us it was coming. And then, and then gave us a cinematic trailer for that DLC. Which, as you know... Doesn't tell us anything about the actual DLC. Like, is it new guns, new weapons? I don't know. Um, because we just got a cinematic for DLC. For a game that's been out for like half a year. Okay, oh, and actually I forgot, uh, after Just Dance, there was, there was For Honor DLC as well. <laughs> okay, I forgot about that. So, um, the, the For Honor DLC, well that has you, um... I feel like a broken record. Then, because everything and everybody and everyone and every company and every entity needs a subscription service of some kind, Uplay Plus is a is another subscription service provided by Ubisoft where you get access to their games and some of them early for like 15 a month. Cool. Then, Roller Champions. Now, thankfully, Thankfully, we did get one cinematic trailer for Roller Champions, but thankfully the game does come out today. You can play it if you go to Uplay or whatever, and you can play it at E3, so it's ready. It's ready, it's playable, so obviously they are able, thankfully, to provide us a gameplay trailer. So, um, they didn't. And some people tried to say that this right here, uh, the second trailer they played is a gameplay trailer. It's not. I don't care what you say. It's not. I is it gameplay? Yes. So maybe I'm contradicting myself. However, it's not recorded from the perspective of the person playing the game. Which for me, that's what a gameplay trailer is. This gameplay trailer, it ha it's like drone footage, right? Like the camera is pulled away from the actual action and they've made a montage. There isn't actually a single clip of the game being played. It's a cinematic drone footage version of the game being played. So it's cinematic gameplay? Close, close to gameplay. Then lastly, we got the, the most original looking game from the entire event. Finally something that wasn't a, a bunch of military men and women shooting and blowing things up other than Roller Derby or Roller Champion, whatever it is. We got Gods and something. Gods and Monsters, and it looks beautiful. It has a Breath of the Wild vibe to it, and we got about two seconds of the game. Um, and then that, that the event just ended after that. It was uh, gone. Okay, look, I'm still having fun. This entire event is just a really exciting time of the year for me, and I'm having fun doing my live streams, hanging out with you guys, making these videos. For me, it just feels like go, go, go right now, and I really like just staying up to date with all this stuff and having a good time. And there is a bunch of games I have my eye on that have been announced, but I'm not excited for them in any way, shape, or form because I haven't had a chance to see them yet. And a cinematic trailer tells us nothing. It tells us nothing about how good or bad a game might be. You see the worst mobile games in existence have the best looking cinematic trailers and I'm so like zoned out by that now. That whole concept, I'm so like, I, cinematic trailers do absolutely nothing for me anymore. Zero. They do nothing for me because they mean nothing. They don't even build hype anymore for me because I'm just, I, it's 2019 and we've seen this a billion times and we get how it works. At least Microsoft was filled with new game announcements and at least a lot of their cinematic trailers were for new games. This is just DLC, most of this stuff has been DLC and mobile. That's why it's so much worse than Microsoft's. Like, at least with Microsoft, again, all those games, they're coming and they're brand new and they are big adventure, exciting things, hopefully that'll happen. The best we can hope, the best we can hope out of the last two, Bethesda and Ubisoft, is that the DLC doesn't suck. And that's why I'm kind of like, 
did we need E3 so far? And with Nintendo doing their own thing just at E3 time, Square Enix better have some good stuff. <laughs> I mean, kind of all rests on their shoulders at this point. Again, if you had a great Ubisoft, this is just my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people enjoyed it. Maybe, let me know down below if you were one of those. I'm sorry for being negative twice in a row, but I, I can't hide my, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna hide my emotions. I'm not gonna come up here and be like, oh no, it was great just to keep the excitement levels high and not be negative. Like I, it, it was it was rough, man, it was rough. I love you all. Hey, flip on that subscribe button and on that notification button because you don't wanna miss anything right now. And I will see you tonight soon, very soon.